away from home are really going to try and slow the game down. And uh, so you can hear the noise increases. It's just below us. The officials all in traditional black uh, lead out Lincoln City in red and white stripes and uh, also black shorts and red socks. And for the uh, Vistas, it's kind of a lime green, dare I say a forest green-like kit, uh, all over with a bit of black on it. All orange for their goalkeeper, pink and black for Lincoln City's Ryan Also, We shouldn't forget Ryan Also, I thought Tomo, for all that Lincoln for me with a better team on Tuesday night without the win I thought also made some very important saves Tuesday night oh absolutely I mean it, it wasn't a clean cut thing where you said Lincoln should have won and chances created uh, also made what I can remember three outstanding saves one which would have been a classic own goal uh, was absolutely out of this world and uh, it, it's, to be fair to the player the only time he's, he's put my, my sort of um, mouth in, my, in uh, my heart in my mouth is when he took the centre forward on I don't think Danny would like that too much but uh, he's certainly done well since he came in. And uh, do you know where you were a year ago tomorrow? No, but you're going to tell me. You were sat there. <laughs> <laughs> and the game was? Macclesfield. Oh, right. So and year, actually, tomorrow is a year to the day that and was And Macclesfield have up today. Absolutely. And uh, actually, that is a real, do you know that is a really weird thing? I was just saying about anomalies so, in football. Because Lincoln, on their last day of the season, the year before, were at... Macclesfield. No, Cheltenham. <laughs> Cheltenham. And who just got up? There you go, maybe it does catch. Uh, but we wish we wish uh, Macclesfield well, we should say. Uh, John Aske, John Aske's done a terrific job there, hasn't he? And uh, I've just had my, my uh, form through, Michael, just incidentally, while we're waiting for the kick-off from the League Manager Association. Uh, and I'll ask you about journalist of the year, me? Well, that goes without saying. <laughs> uh, but no, vote for the, the, the manager of the season from the Premier League down to League Two. Uh, and you get you get three, your first choice, your second and your third. So Coleman in the two? But you, it's the actual manager of the year. Yes. So, I mean, Coleman comes to mind, I mean... Uh, I mean, I've got a lot of time for Sean Dyche in, in that Burnley as well. Um, I'm still thinking about it, I'm not going to make my mind up yet, I'll, I'll consult you, as I always do, the Oracle. <laughs> Uh, big uh, set of games since the pre-match routine going through the photos in the centre circle. Big big couple of weeks though really, a lot of games coming up so today and then obviously a Stanley Cowley applauds the main stand and you can hear the away stand uh, returning the feet. Uh, Tuesday, uh, Lincoln away at Coventry and then Saturday next week, Accrington and then uh, Yeovil on the final day. You think probably 6 out of 12 will be enough? Yeah, I, I mean look at the game. <laughs> You, you expect to win this one at home, or you, you know, this is the, the one that you think you will win. Coventry, I can see a draw at Coventry. Um, Atkinson, Stanley, I don't know. I don't know what to think about Atkinson. You know what I've said They'll to you They'll be on about. the burgers by then. Well, yeah, I mean, there'll be barbecues <laughs> all over the place. There'll be bottles of beer flying around. I mean, that's the kind of that's the kind of team uh, the kind of team they are. And uh, and then the last one, Yeovil at home. I mean, uh, I, I just think. As much as anything can be nailed on at football, I, I think Lincoln will get in the playoffs. It's in the, I mean, it's in the hands, Michael, isn't it? The, you know, the destiny's there. Plenty of noise around here at Centerweight. Lincoln City will be attacking Stacey West in the uh, first half of the season. And it's Colchester in their lime green kit that are getting the game underway. Plenty of noise, plenty of excitement, plenty of hope and hopefully some glory for Lincoln City. Ranji will keep you up to date with Boston United in Games with Trinity, arguably one of the biggest games in Games with Trinity's history this afternoon. Uh, should they lose, uh, they are almost certainly relegated. It would need something extraordinary in terms of goal score that won't happen for them to even think of anything else. Lincoln competing for the ball, Colchester to play it long uh, into the edge of the Lincoln penalty area, and it was a quarter of a chance for, it didn't quite sit for the Colchester player. And now Harry Anderson is over the halfway line, sprinting away from his man, and the Colchester player picks up the free kick, which he takes quickly, and to be fair, Colchester at the moment, judging on this, haven't come to sit. No, I Oh, the keeper hasn't come for it, and it's a shot over the top. I paused because I thought the keeper was going to come for it, Tommy. Well, I paused because I thought you were going to tell me you're going to have a shot on goal, but uh, no, I mean, they've got nothing to, you know, they've nothing to gain, nothing to lose, have they? They can't get the playoffs, they can't get relegated, so why not come and have a go at Lincoln? And uh, although I think it's an insipid kit, it wouldn't inspire me, their kit, uh, but they have got a big team, haven't they? I mean, when I said big, a tall team. It looks like a 4-2-3-1 to me. 
Bumble downfield, Reid, they're going to flick it on, can't quite do so, comes back into midfield, Boswick, ball bounces over his head and it's tidied up by the imps inside the centre circle, Wharton chips it forward, Reid is uh, climbed all over the back and has the decision given against him. Yeah, I like that, well done centre-half, no foul for me, get off your feet. You don't think you went through the back of him? No, jumped early, good challenge. I remember Luke Prosser, the captain of uh, Colchester, I saw a young lad at Barnsley and I thought he was destined for at least championship stuff. He's been around the lower leagues a long time and he's a really good competitor. It's a free kick. Well, it's not too long for a confrontation, is it? He went up with the fourth official. And it's going to be a long clearance downfield. Uh, Nathan Arnold, one of the... Uh, in theory, Salford players is uh, here today. So walk past us. It's headed on, headed away. Flick downfield. Going to be uh, Wharton to head it back towards the halfway line. And Lincoln competing for it. It's tidied up. And a long ball downfield. Looking for Green to get after it. Green tries to control it. Comes off his boot and goes out for a throw. Well, it certainly looks like we've got a football match on our hands, Michael. Um, as you said, Colchester, uh, they've come to play. Um, as you said, strange formation. We've won up the front, but they're going to get bodies forward from the midfield. City competing for inside the Colchester half, but it's smashed into the Lincoln half by one of the midfielders. And Wharton chases that ball, it goes out of play. And he thinks about the quick throw, then decides to leave it for Sam Habigam, left back for the imps this afternoon throwing it down the line and Reed looks to flick it on and then Whitehouse does Green chases after it the defender can only do one thing and he does that putting it out of play into the co-op stand yeah Lincoln just uh, caught a little bit in those opening minutes with Colchester mounting a couple of serious attacks but now just getting composure to the game City with a cross a high one and it should be the goalkeepers and it is it's an easy one he gathers it in and we'll look to clear that is one downfield. tall goalkeeper what do you think Mike? I think I, I think he's about 11 foot tall I think I could reach out and touch him from here so looks he's, I reckon six seven yeah. he makes Matt Reed look short he can't kick the ball though too well <laughs> put it straight out of play I think he's just getting his range that was a range finder I think yes it is a uh, throw for um, I tell you what, it's hard to do with the Colchester team, and I won't try and moan about it too much, but reading the numbers on the backs of the shirt. I've got no chance, Michael. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Yeah. <laughs> Flicked on, and Lincoln uh, trying to get it with Reed. Reed has it, shielding the ball. Looks around for support, plays it back to Habigan, the left back, and his ball's a little short, but Wharton can get it forward into Green. It's a bit fierce, but he controls it. Lincoln are back on the halfway line. There's a poor ball from the Imps. Colchester trying to pick it up on the halfway line. Now looking to get the ball out on the left-hand side. And it's with uh, the left midfielder coming forward into the penalty area. Erdley just barges him and forces him outside of the penalty area. Good defending from Erdley. But this time the cross nearly comes in. Erdley charges it down the cross to the corner. Yeah, good patient defending from Neil Erdley. To be fair, the Colchester wide player really looking to take Neil Erdley on and uh, uh, Neil Erdley did what good defenders do you stay on your feet and you work the man on the ball don't dive in well one of the uh, big centre halves about both of them have come forward Luke Prosser's there the number five just been involved in that incident with Erdley, with um, Matt Reed. after five minutes are we going to get our first goal in the game he's taken short the corner and into the penalty and come Colchester and it's just chipped over the top of the crossbar I'm not sure if that was the intent or whether he was trying to find a teammate. It remains goalless here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. No, I think it was a, a ball delivered to the far post, but uh, could have had also been a bit of trouble if it had been any further off his line, but sailed uh, onto the top of the net. But certainly showing their intent at the moment. And as you said, Michael, with a pale green kit, trying to oh, distinguish it's white numbers, impossible. It's a shocker. It is a shocker, that's for sure. Long ball downfield, Reed flicks it on. Lincoln player falls over, that's uh, Harry Anderson, nothing given. I can remember Chris Parker was never a fond of these sorts of things and he would have had a good moment about this one. Forward come Colchester, 
crossed into the Lincoln penalty area, headed away by Wharton, flicked away by Woodyard, Green controls it just about, plays it back for Habergham and his ball is over the halfway line and Lincoln are going to pick up the second ball. Uh, Whitehouse is dispossessed and it goes out of play and it's going to be a throw. Well, it's a lively start from the away team. Usually uh, away teams, you, you say to them, look, don't, don't go diving in and just get a measure of your opponent. Uh, but he started the game really lively. Free kick for the Imps inside the Colchester half. Slightly to the uh, left. And it's going to be a chance for Habigam to get the ball into the penalty area. Looking around the ground, not too many spaces really. Very healthy attendance to say the least. Central Bank, plenty of noise as the ball's into the box and Whitehouse charges after it. Whitehouse goes over inside the area. The referee and the assistant have a look at it and decide they're not interested. Danny Cowley looks frustrated. The uh, indicator for me is there was no appeal from the Lincoln players. No, I thought the referee had a slight think about it, but he uh, decided that uh, it wasn't a penalty. Well, early warning sign for Colchester as there's a long ball forward and uh, chasing after it is Mandrum. Keeps it in play, but it's cleared away by Wharton. Mandrum, who played from memory against Lincoln and for Eastley last season, I think it was. With, uh, Lincoln chase after it. Colchester have it. And they're looking to move it into midfield. And now wide, they've suddenly got a bit of space as Habigam got dragged in. Habigam trying to block off the forward momentum and manages to do so. The Colchester player took too long on the shot. The Colchester pick up possession inside the Lincoln half. And now looking to get the cross into the Imps penalty. It's very, very deep. And Erdley will head it away at the cost of the throw. As I said, certainly showing attacking intent. Colchester did not come certainly for a point. Having a right go at Lincoln, getting width on the pitch as well. City clear it away with Harry Anderson, rolls out for a throw for Colchester. I think it was it Danny said, 10 minutes drive from his uh, house or somewhere, that was it 10 miles, I can't remember, but not far. Closest football league club to where he lives at the moment. Obviously the summer, as he has said, planning to move up here. As uh, Boswick's clearance is unceremonious and out of play at the cost of a throw. Under the cost of it, uh, Lincoln, it's... Uh all hands to the pumps. Throw for Manchester United, and it's a foul throw. And that's a bit rubbish, really, when you get in a useful <laughs> position. Well, it is, isn't it? Well, you don't expect to see uh, a foul throw at professional level. Manchester had, a, from their point of view, a frustrating season. The ball bounces out of play, and it's going to be now a. Uh, a throw for the home side. And do you know, the shirts are really, really bad to read. I mean, as, as well, close as... No, close as... Yeah, no, so the exact same, as close as we can get, and you still can't distinguish. Actually, Michael, uh, when the Lincoln played away at Colchester, I, I thought Colchester would be up there challenging for a playoff position. Lincoln trying to win it back with Harry Anson. There's a Colchester player down in midfield. So he, he must have deemed that a free kick, the referee. There's anything wrong with that, but... Well, I'm sure it looks very nice with jeans, but I don't like the culture to kit. Anyway, enough of that. City have won the ball back, and it's going to be Wharton's long clearance over the halfway line that's uh, picked off by the uh, centre-half. Eastman plays it long downfield, and Wharton's poor touch means it's a corner. Sloppy play from the young lad there, Wharton. Uh, he either decides that he's going to clear it one touch or... or control the ball and he tried to be too clever bring it down on his laces we've got an update of our other feature games in a couple of minutes here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire 0-0 both at Gainsborough and at Boston corner into the penalty area oh. that looked like a push to me Arthur oh, that was a pretty clear push by a Lincoln player shot comes in from a Colchester player and the referee's going back for a free kick to Lincoln I'll tell you what Tomo to me that was a pretty clear push I think it's a penalty nailed yeah, on Absolutely. No, I mean, and it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a subtle piece of uh, play and a push, was it? It was a, a one that was seen by everybody. Must have been seen. That brought the Colchester manager uh, out of his dugout. It's going to be uh, a chance of Lincoln to clear their lines over the halfway line. 
the former Ryan Olsop ball inside his penalty area at the moment glorious sunshine at Sinsel Bank and his clearance is long Wharton underneath it there's an offside against the Imps perhaps, well, sorry, his White House was underneath it and um, comes to nothing and the game's just sort of meandered a bit of late yeah it's going to be an interesting battle because uh, the two centre backs for, uh, for Colchester they're well equipped to deal with Reed, aren't they they, they give him a good sort of two or three inches in height Field, headed away by Wharton, chested down by Green, shields the ball, plays it back into feet, forward from Habingham. Just a little bit scrappy at the moment. Thrown into feet for Colchester. Lincoln, they do well to win it back with Woodyard. It's forward to Reed. Reed inside his own half, not got many options, so plays it back to Wharton and to Boswick. Boswick has to readjust himself, sprint back to his penalty and plays it long downfield Harry Anson is after that and he nearly got on the end of it yeah, I mean Colchester are going to rely on their uh, giant goalkeeper to come for everything aren't they be interesting the first couple of set plays Lincoln get where the keeper commits himself long ball into the Lincoln half and it bounces out of play let's hold our breath let's get to uh, Telford for Mark Yes, Michael, it's nil-nil here. There's early pressure from Telford, created a couple of chances, but both missed as the ball comes into the box. Oh, it's going to be cleared by FC Telford. Yeah, sorry, Michael. Yes, nil-nil here. Games for Trinity were hanging on the first five minutes, but they seem to settle down a little bit now, but it remains nil-nil and very nervy. Yes, I feel, I feel I it. Who's nervy? Games for Trinity. Let's get to, uh, uh, to Salford and to Dale. Still nil nil here, Michael. Boston's made a very bright start. Salford looked nervous. Remember, a point wins them the league. Boston with an Andy Thanos free kick, well saved by the keeper. Still Salford nil, Boston nil. I'll tell you one thing for Sam Walker, he's got a throw like a quarterback. Not bad for right arm over, is it? <laughs> Just bowled it the uh, more than half the length of the pitch. Whitehouse wins it back. Silly get out to Green. Green down the left hand side. He's got a tracking run from the fullback. Looks to come inside. Falls over. And the referee, I think, has given a a softish free kick in the end yeah I think it's a free kick it's a silly one uh, to give away from the Colchester right back see what the keeper does on this one the big giant keeper see if uh, he tries to help his back four out by claiming the ball and Matt Reed, uh, the furthest player forward just standing on the edge of the six yard box and uh, it's going to be a right footed delivery into the penalty area noise for the Lincoln City fans around the ground and he's going to be right footed into the penalty not too much on it. it's behind for a goal kick oh, it's not very often you say that about Neil Erdley uh, with his delivery being poor but uh, just over hit it over clubbed it and took it out beyond the far post Neil Erdley uh, back inside his half now I think if uh, Tomo and I were voting which we don't probably be our player of the season uh, it, it, yes, I, I think so, just ahead of Boswick. Uh, I mean, I've no doubt they'll probably share the honours, Boswick and, and Erdley. Well, a lot of contract negotiations ongoing, as we've mentioned a few times. Hopefully some news in the not-too-distant future. Of course, involving uh, the manager uh, and his brother as well. Lots of things going on off the pitch. They come to a fruition, we'll bring them to you here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. As forward come Colchester, down the left-hand side, attacking run into the uh, penalty area. City just trying to block off the cross, still comes in. And that looked like uh, Halbergen was being no more than strong and it rolls out for a goal kick. They're certainly getting a lot of joy in the wide areas, Colchester, and that with Lincoln playing a narrow 4-3-3, obviously... Uh, the accumulation of players for, for Lincoln is in the midfield three, isn't it? And what uh, Colchester are doing with the, the sort of four in the midfield uh, and really stretching Lincoln and getting width on the pitch. Long ball downfield, headed uh, sideways by Boswick. And Erdley plays it right-footed along the turf and Harry Anderson falls over. Thought he was fouled, referee didn't. And oh, uh, that's a very clear pull of the shirt. A yellow card as well. Certainly looking slick down this uh, left hand side, aren't they, Colchester? A lot of it seems to be good understanding between the left back, the left side midfielder, and the wide left player. A little a triangle, a little give and go, and uh, 
I really got a run on early and he pulled the Colchester player back by his shirt. It's going to be uh, Ben Stevenson, the number 17. I can only tell because he's so close to us, you can just about read his shirt. He's going to take it. Note to kit manufacturer for Colchester, white on lime green does not work. A right footed delivery from the left hand side into the Imps penalty area, headed on and over, and it's a goal kick. Little mention, Michael, about the scouts sit to our left, don't they? And there's an elderly gentleman who's trying to write the set players down, and he's really straining to see what numbers have gone up for Colchester. Oh, I don't blame him. I mean, maybe that's the tactic. I'm joking. So, uh, long clearance from Allsop for Lincoln. Reid are going to flick it on, cleared away by Colchester, Boswick comes in, strong from him, Reid thought about the challenge, Colchester player almost went over in anticipation, it didn't come, and the lime green shirts of the team from Essex are pushing forward now into the Lincoln half, and they've got a bit of space out on the left hand side, Shopido is uh, over this one, and he's looking to take on Erd, he's given him a Difficult afternoon so far. Ready to the penalty. Well won back by Woodyard. That was a great challenge from Alex Woodyard. Back on the right hand side. Colchester long range shot is well over the top, but they're moving them all round decently outside of the Lincoln penalty area. Well, if you came at the moment, you'd think Colchester with the home team uh, making all the running. As I said, getting a lot of joy down this uh, their left hand side, Lincoln's right. Uh, he's really being left, up, left isolated, 1v1, and having to deal with that. And at times they've uh, been overexposed. We might do uh, games for Trinity and Boston United, both goalless in their games. Reed looks to flick that one on. Can't do so. Cleared into the Lincoln half. Headed away by Wharton, the centre half for Lincoln. And it is nil-nil, by the way, in the Mansfield game. Another one of key interest to Lincoln City Colchester uh, Coventry winning last night 3 1 against Stevenage. Saw some hopeful tweets from Lincoln fans through the night saying, Come on, Stevenage, suck yourself out. Wasn't to be. You look after yourselves, really. That's what it's about, and that's where Lincoln are, and they have their fate in their own hands. Wharton long into the Colchester half over the head of Reed, but Reed will get a second bite of the cherry, can't quite connect with it. Colchester clear into the Imps half. Scott Wharton with a terrific header gets it through to Green. Green tries to square it, it's picked off, but Reed comes in with a challenge. But Colchester come away with the ball. The Colchester player hit Green, sort of gets up slightly sheepishly, really, sort of bounced off him. But Colchester with a chance to cross into the Lincoln penalty area and it's turned behind for a goal kick. Well, it's a very determined Colchester team, isn't it? I mean, sometimes when you get these fixtures, Michael, you sometimes you get the impression that they're on the beach teams and, they've, you know, three or four games to go, they've, they've called it a day, but Colchester have come with a really determined attitude. Uh, no, some of the manager was really willing them on. And clearance coming up then from Allsop. It's well over the halfway line. Reed. They're going to flick it on, can't do so. Well dealt with by Colchester. They've done well with uh, Reed so far this afternoon. Not quite been one of Matt Reed's afternoons yet. Plenty of time still for that to happen as forward come the Imps. And uh, Frecklington's control lets him down. It's back though with Habigam, and he's pretty quickly clattered into and picks up a throw which he takes, and throws it into Reed. Reed manages to shield the ball in green, and Whitehouse making the run, and also into the penalty here. It's Harry Anderson for the shot! And that is only going to go and hit Tomo's car behind the goal. Now Lincoln's first real uh, threatening move, and it was a good link-up play between uh, Green, Reed, and Anderson. And uh, Anderson, when he got to the edge of the 18-yard box, he got a little bit excited, I think, to say the least. And, uh, yes, as the you, adrenaline went, didn't it? As you said, it, uh, it finished up over the stand, over the houses, on its way to the city centre. BBC Radio Lincoln Shop, hope and glory with myself, Michael Horton, and Steve Thompson. We've got uh, Mark home with Gainesville, where they're nil-nil. Dale with Boston, where it's also goalless, and Graham Cow covering Grantham Town, and as we understand, they're still goalless in that game. So we're all waiting for a, a breakthrough. As Colchester have possession, and uh, they're pushing forward. 
been playing 21 minutes as it's picked off by Erdley. Green has come to the right hand side. Green back to Erdley. Erdley charge to the cross into the penalty. Great cross and it's headed behind. Fantastic piece of play from Neil Erdley. Corner to the Imps. Yeah, good link up play from Matt Green and Erdley. Green, uh, it was a perfectly weighted ball. Excellent ball from, uh, from Green. Weighted ball and Erdley with a tremendous cross and it was uh, Luke Prosser, the number five. Uh, for Colchester, they're catching them with a great defensive header. It was good play all round and good defending from Colchester. Well, Sam Habigan Corners have a habit of uh, delivering breakthroughs for Lincoln City. And it'd be an ideal time now with uh, plenty of noise around since the back half the Stacey West full of Lincoln fans chipped to the back post, headed back goal as goalkeeper should gather that one in. And that'll be a bit frustrating because Wharton had himself a bit of space. Yeah, it was a well-worked corner where Wharton just uh, peeled off to the far post. No one from Colchester went with him. And you'd say, is it a good or bad header from Wharton? He's tried to head it back where it came from, but uh, into the keeper's hands. So it's uh, Lincoln who have a throw. It's going to be Green who will take it. And he's looking around for uh, options. Frecklington offers. And then jogs back and... Eventually it's to Whitehouse, and Whitehouse does well to get it back to Habigam, and Frecklington smuggles the ball to Wharton, and Wharton gets it to Boswick. The furthest player back for Lincoln City, and he advances to the halfway line, and he looks for a right-to-left ball into the edge of the penalty area, headed away by a Colchester player, comes back for Harry Anderson, and then picked off by Woodyard. Woodyard and Erdley get it to Boswick. Boswick, another chance to play the ball a bit further across, it's got a bit too much on it and it goes over the head of Matt Reed and out of play in the shade of the co-op stand. Yeah, you just think, wouldn't you, Mike, getting a bit preoccupied with that long diagonal. I understand Reed is, a, is an armoury and, and a good weapon on that, but uh, they're overloading Colchester and getting two on Reed and you don't get the ball right as Boswick didn't there, and he went straight out of play. Thrown to the halfway line and it's Habigam. Habigam trying to get it forward, the ball is charged down by a Colchester defender and Lincoln have the throw which they've taken, it's with Frecklington and now Boswick Erdley's wide on the right, Boswick decides to give it to Erdley this time Erdley, lovely little ball down the line, just picked off by the Colchester defender Harry Anderson's pressing the, the uh, Colchester defence and it's not the most convincing of clearances, Colchester could be playing themselves into trouble they managed though to get it to the halfway line where it's good preventive work from Wharton it comes back to him again and a great piece of control with his thigh and then he plays it out for Habigam, Habigam forward to Green and Lincoln are having to compete for it on the halfway line as they lose possession and forward come the line Green of Colchester and that looks a little bit of a soft one. I'm not sure the referee actually saw it. I'd have to assume the assistant did because it was behind his line of sight. Yeah, I think it was a, a deliberate trip from uh, And so, as I said, they're, they're very lively, Colchester. They're, they're, what I like from Colchester so far is the way they compete. Competing, they seem uh, really up for the game. Contra attacking down the right hand side, playing it into the penalty area, cleared away by Lincoln. It's Frecklington, but the lime green shirts have it again, halfway inside. The South Park half, looking to try and create, out on the right, Lincoln just pressing the ball, Colchester into the edge of the penalty area but blocked off by Wharton, impressive again, and then Frecklington nearly went, Woodyard nearly went it, spins away, Whitehouse nearly wins it, but it stays with Colchester, they get out towards the right hand side, got themselves a little bit of a glimmer of a chance, now the shot is driven in. And that's being very hopeful, it's over the top, smashes into the radio linker for advertising hoarding, and it's going to be a goal kick. Yeah, very good approach play from, from Colchester. I like how they're using the width and they're, they're looking to build it up, but once they get uh, into the attacking third, that's Lincoln's attacking third, they sort of run out of ideas, and then they just seem to think, we'll just try and get it in the box or have a shot when they're not really ready for it. Right, let's spin you through the score lines in League 2. Barnet 1. Newport nil, Green is chasing down the right hand side, got away from his man, just about keeps it in play, but he gives it for Erdley, Erdley right foot across, brilliant cross, headed away by the lime green shirt of Colchester, comes back for Boswick, Boswick heads it on, Wharton, uh, sorry, Whitehouse goes up for it, ball comes back to him, didn't know much about it, it's with Frecklington, and he gets it out towards the left hand side, and has it back again, and Woodyard is to his right, but he gives it to Wharton, and Wharton 
gives it to Boswick. I don't we know what's going to come here. Although Boswick moves forward, Erdley is wide, and he plays it for Erdley. Erdley's got some space into the penalty. Comes back on his left foot, just scuffs the shot. Makes nil-nil here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Yeah, lucky for Erdley there. Well, good link-up play between, uh, or, or set-up play rather, between Boswick and Erdley. And Erdley just cut inside, couldn't get the power with his left foot. Lincoln seems to be just stopping it a little bit here at the moment. He's uh, back with Wharton. And Wharton gives one to Frecklington. Back to Boswick. Encouraging applause from the Lincoln fans. Out towards Erdley. And Erdley chips it over the halfway line. And Whitehouse is running down the channel into the by the corner flag. Holds on to it. It's got possession. Needs support. Green is making the run. And the challenge comes in from Colchester at the cost of a throw. To tell you, Barnet are 1 0 up against Newport. Yeah, Martin Allen. I wouldn't uh, bet against Martin Allen. We're going to get to uh, Salford when we get a break in play. Colchester looking to clear. Lincoln closing down the space in the form of Erdley. Cleared away by Colchester only as far as Habergham inside the centre circle. And that's he nearly plays himself into trouble. And Habergham stretches and gets it back to his goalkeeper. So we can get to Salford and to Dale. Where Boston United have taken the lead, Michael. It's a deserved lead. Reese Thompson tapping in after a scuff shot from Shamanga. Salford nil, Boston one. Squeaky bum. <laughs> it's, uh, it's picked up by Frecklington and Green. And now Woodyard in the centre circle. Feels like Lincoln are, are starting to get to grips with Colchester a little bit. Habigam, high ball into the penalty. Reed has got space, heads it back in towards the penalty. Headed away by one of the big centre halves for Colchester. Lincoln have to track back and Erdley picks up the ball, plays it into feet to Reed. Reed feels for the defender, back to Erdley. Erdley squares it to Woodyard, and Woodyard has got Habergham on the halfway line, and he now has possession into the feet of Anderson, who's playing on the left now. Chip forward, one for Green to chase after, cleared away, bounces up, it's tidied up by Lincoln City, and it's with Habergham. And Anderson oh, it just breaks down for the Imps. Colch to look to bring it away. That's a foul by Harry Anderson. And it remains 0 0 here. Elsewhere in League Two, it's Cambridge 1, Cheltenham 2, Carlisle 1, Luton 0, Crewe 0, Morecambe 0, Exeter 0, Crawley 1, Forest Green 1, Chesterfield 0, Mansfield 0, Port Vale 0, Golders Street, Notts County, Yeovil, Swindon in Grimsby Town, and Stanley are 1 0 up at Wickham. No hangover for their promotion there. We just uh, Barnett just making it a little bit squeaky for people there now, Tomo. Yeah, as I said, with Martin Allen, not, you know what it's going to you're going to have a war with uh, whatever team he sends out. Headed away by Wharton, cleared back by Colchester. Green controls it, but he gives it to a Colchester player. Just breaks down for Lincoln City. It's forced back towards the halfway line. Harry Anderson uh, nearly wins the ball back, but Colchester by stretching and put it out for a throw for City inside the Colchester half and Matt Green and Matt Reed encourages Lincoln forward. Habigam thinks about the short throw. This takes a little bit of time. Colchester are now set. And it's uh, back with Habigam and he plays it all the way back to Wharton. And Wharton looks up and plays a left to right ball. And will Reed get the flick on for Erdley? No, he heads it back into Green. Green's got a little bit of time to turn. And he gets a shot away, just past the post. And it's a touch of the keeper, I think, so it's a corner. Well, I mean, what's happened there with the, uh, the Colchester keeper? He's, he's not expecting Green to, to shoot. You think the moment's gone, because he's 25 yards out. And it's one of those Barnes Wallace bouncing bombs, isn't it, that's just took about four or five bounces. And I'm not sure whether the keeper got a touch, but the referee gave him uh, the save. We'll get to the games we game in a moment, but let's see what happens from this corner for Lincoln City. Stacey West, end of the ground, the air raid siren is going. A right-footed delivery into the penalty area, headed away by a Colchester defender. Harry Anderson is after it, gets hold of it, hasn't got many options, has to play all the way back to Erdley on the halfway line. A right-footed ball drifted forward, headed away by Colchester, and the cost of the throw, so let's get to Mark at Telford. Still nil-nil here, Michael. Henrik Ravas has produced two fantastic saves to keep his side in it, plus two missed chances for Telford have kept the scores level. He's here hanging on a little bit still. It's games with Trinity nil, Telford nil. Green shielding the ball, gets it to Erdley. Erdley, brilliant play, past his event, the pull down. That's going to be a yellow card 
and it's going to be a free kick in a very useful position and Erdley will be very frustrated because he's done a terrific job getting past the defender I've got, by the way I've got no idea how to give the yellow card to others no. it's a I think, it, I think it might be the uh, left back but I'm not sure it's, uh, I mean, Erdley's been absolutely super down this right-hand side, hasn't he? He's given the width, he's got forward, he's got himself into dangerous positions. And he's been a real at attacking threat. And he's been a terrific sign. He's proof that sometimes trial players are good players, because I think I've always, I've always generally believed trial players come and go. But he's come on trial and he's stayed. And he's well, I think for every, every six that you take, there's maybe only one out of six that you, you end up signing. But you have to have a look, don't you? Absolutely. It's... Uh, a Habergham delivery from the right, it's virtually on the edge of the penalty, it wasn't very far away from being a penalty really. Um, what's he going to do, is he going to lift it or is he going to drive it into that penalty area? Can Lincoln get the first goal of the game? It's sort of driven one, cleared away by Colchester quite easily in the end. And it's uh, Colchester trying to build a breakaway attack, Woodyard forces Colchester to the edge of the pitch, but uh, Colchester still coming forward, Lincoln have got plenty of players back, and Woodyard tries to win it. It's lifted towards the Lincoln penalty area. Erdley probably can't quite believe he's all the way back there after winning that set piece. And he's had to smash the ball into the Colchester half. Lincoln didn't realise it's in play, but it is. And they forced it all the way back to the Colchester goalkeeper. And his clearance is a decent one that time, albeit doesn't get too far. It's headed on, cleared away by Colchester. Frecklington probably had a bit more time than he thought inside the centre circle. Yeah, he needed a call, Lee Frecklington, just to say he got time on the ball. Colchester being forced back. Green and Erdley has worked quite well in the last couple of minutes, causing some problems to the lime green shirts from Essex. Lincoln defending quite deep at the moment. Forward come Colchester. Long-range shot that's charged down. Cleared away, and Lincoln are chasing after this. And oh. the defender is... Uh, Dawdling on that, and Harry Anderson is unfortunately can't get on the end of that. It was a, a bit of end of season play about that from Colchester, but Lincoln have it inside the centre circle. The Imps showing a bit of urgency. Forward comes Frecklington, looks for the drifted ball to Reed. Reed back to Green for the shot over the top. Yeah, although we said the pitch looks in, uh, in in good condition in terms of the turf, it's certainly lively, isn't it? Yeah, certainly I think Daddy was saying it's a bit hard. Yeah, you, you certainly see with a bounce. If you don't get your first touch uh, right, then if it goes away from you, it's quite a lively bounce. BBC Radio Lincolnshire, hope and glory. Myself, Michael Horton and Steve Thompson remind you, Boston United 1-0 up. Games with Trinity goalless in their vital game. Wharton heads away for City. Colchester play it back into the Lincoln half. They're inside the centre circle looking to try and build. Lincoln have got players back pressing the ball at the moment forcing Colchester back they are paying with that sort of abandon of a team that knows they're not going to get relegated knows they're not going to get promoted there's a, a little they're playing with that pressure aren't they yeah it's okay you can say go out and express yourselves uh, don't take any risks uh, but express yourself certainly in the attacking third all sorts clearance Reed flicks it on into the channel Whitehouse is after it it's pushed off the ball and then uh, Somehow, it's been given Colchester's way. As there is a goal at Salford with them. Where it's 2-0 to Boston United. Jordan Keane headed in Ashley Hemmings' corner. I didn't expect this. Salford nil, Boston 2. Well, that's the extraordinary scoreline for uh, Boston United. Do you know what, Tomo? Maybe that mathematical chance is still there. They needed all nine from their six, from their... Uh, nine points in the remaining three games but oh, I don't know how that's just been given Lincoln's way a, for me that was a foul by Wharton who's climbing all over the back yeah the I, the I, I complimented the, the centre back with Colchester going up early and uh, I mean Wharton when he, he started jumping for that one on the Friday didn't he yeah. um, but the referee deemed that the Colchester centre forward had made it back for him a oh, fantastic scoreline for Boston United 2-0 still an outside chance of those playoff places they haven't had a chance to look at how the teams around them are doing. It's headed on by Reed into Whitehouse. Oh, and Whitehouse took it away from Frecklington and Reed swung a boot and it goes <laughs> over the top. I think the operative word, Michael, was swung. <laughs> yes. It wasn't with conviction, was it? No, it wasn't under any kind of uh, control, was it? 
But listen, if you don't buy a ticket, you don't want a raffle. So if you'd gone in the top corner, we'd all been uh, in ecstasy. Less than ten minutes till half time. Bumper crowd here at Sinsel Bank. Only got Coventry Tuesday night. We continue away at Coventry. And then this time next week, we're at the uh, leaders, probably champions by then, Accrington Stanley. And then final game of the season back here at Sinsel Bank against Yeovil. Danny and Nicky Cowley talking to the assistant referee. And it's a long clearance of the goalkeeper, headed on by one of the uh, Colchester midfielders. But Lincoln have it back with Harry Anson on the halfway line. And uh, Woodyard gets past one challenge. Woodyard pushing his way forward, puts him a throw. I mean, goalkeeper's kicks now. I mean, that was just a lazy sort of kick, wasn't it? Three quarters of a pitch. It wasn't kicked with purpose, was it? I mean, Peter Grotti, the former Lincoln keeper's down there. Let's ask him how far he kicked the ball when he was here. Lincoln pushing forward with Anderson. And then Habigan with the cross. And Colch to try to clear it and concede the throw. Taken quickly by Lincoln into Harry Anderson. Anderson pass one. And then the uh, challenge comes in, goes behind for a corner. Good early decision by Habigan for the throw. Yeah, both teams really, when they get into the last third of, uh, of the pitch, that, that's uh, the attacking third for both teams. It, it's sort of void of ideas, and it's, it's going to need someone like Anderson who's going to take a defender on and get past him and either produce a, a match winning cross or a strike on goal. So it's a Lincoln corner from the attacking left. Frecklington taking it into the penalty area. It's very deep, but Wharton manages to head it back, but Colchester will clear to the halfway line, but Erdley's the only man there. Terrific first touch gives him a chance to drift the ball into the penalty area, and it's cleared away. And uh, back out towards Boswick, who's out on the left-hand side. Is he going to look to uh, get the cross in, or he gives it to Habigam, and it's a high left footed cross from the left. Reed goes up, the referee's given a decision the other way. Not sure what he's seen, but he's very quick on it. There's a lot of pushing, Michael, going on in that box from set players and corners, and I feel a bit for the referee because the goalkeeper of a cold chest, whenever you saw that last corner, uh, Lincoln, what they do, they, they put a man in front of the keeper and he blocks the keeper. And the keeper gave uh, the, uh, sorry, the Lincoln player an almighty push in the back. And Do you know, we haven't talked about the referee, so therefore he hasn't had a bad game, has he, so far, don't you think? No, it's been one of those games where there's been nothing uh, of any incident, really, has there? You know what's going to happen now, second half. Anyway, Lincoln are charging after the ball with uh, Green. And the Colchester players just handle the ball out of play. And the decision's been given the other way. Green walks away. Got a, uh, a little bit more from Liam Scully. Uh, the Link City Chief Executive at half-time. We talked about the Bradley Wood situation, which we've all uh, think we've done enough on at this stage. But uh, Nathan Arnold here, uh, not at Salford. What's the situation with him? There's been pictures in the wake of him over in Nepal with uh, links to Nepal. So ask uh, Liam about that. And also uh, there's uh, changes to how the Stacey West stand is being used for the next two home games and probably for next season. We'll have more on that as Colchester deal with the threat of Reed. And Boswick heads the ball back to Olsop and it's all tidied up. Five minutes to half time. Nil nil here. Nil nil in the massive game for games with Trinity and two nil for Boston United at Salford as it's headed out of play. And it's a real hope for Boston United to get beyond. You never know playoffs might happen this season, but really for next season, we could have a terrific season and uh, the manager as there is a goal at Telford with Mark. Stand by, Michael. Ashley Warsford has just scored for Gainsborough Trinity. Great play from Nathan Stainsfield. Crossfield shot. Goalkeeper parries it. And there's man on the spot. Ashley Warsford to tap it into an empty net. There's no more than they deserve for hanging on in this game. 1-0 to Trinity. Blimey, Tomo. That recalls my hat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you're, are you going to walk across the Brayford later? <laughs> I wish. That was Danny and Nicky's job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed for games with Trinity and Boston United in a stronger position, 2-0 up. Here, it's goalless, not being exactly uh, 
overworking the goalkeepers so far. Four and a half minutes to go. Thrown into the penalty area. Uh, the Lincoln penalty area. Colch to have it. Lincoln forcing away for goal. Shot driven in. Takes a deflection. And also does well to see it nice and early. Gathers it in. And we'll look to clear downfield. Are we going to get a goal just before the break? Green is underneath it. Ball bounces up nicely for him. Into the penalty. Green still going forward. Tries to get the cross in. Kolsch, though, will clear back towards the halfway line. Ball didn't quite bounce for him. Well, they certainly defended with a life, sir, Colchester. Good work rate from Colchester. Wasn't a bad bowl of the ball from uh, Boswick then, either. Ball be on the uh, weights. Long ball forward from Lincoln, headed on by Green. Edge of the area is Whitehouse, forced away from goal. Early little dink ball, left footed into the penalty area for Anderson to chase after. Swing of the boot for the defender, has it out of the penalty area. Woodjard with a header forward, Reed is offside. Yeah, three minutes to go this first half was added time. And really, Michael, neither keeper really been tested, have they? It's uh, been a lot of long balls, a lot of battles. And both sets of centre backs. The referee's having a word with Reed. He must have said something. Reed and uh, Woodyard is, uh, of course, captain with Luke Waterfall uh, on the uh, subs bench, just being called across. And I think uh, Matt Reed's been told any more infringements, and you're in the book. Colchester fans are appreciating Big Matt's attributes. <laughs> A uh, free kick then, which the coach to keeper places over the halfway line, just under three under three minutes to go as it goes out of play. And I have to say, his kicking's been pretty poor. Generally, it's not with purpose, is it? No, I mean they've got one. I mean they've just got the one up the front, haven't they? As you said, with the system they're playing, and he's got to be spot on with his uh, kick in the coach as the keeper. By the way, did you notice the holy mark go really milk to that moment? He's getting worse. <laughs> Ball played forward. Uh, picked he's, up. Like, he's, get, he's getting like Cammy on Sky. <laughs> uh, Lincoln have played a lovely square ball. There are some of those. Uh, it's been picked up by Erdley. Erdley passed one player, sprinting forward. Lovely deep cross. Has he got too much on it? Yes, it has behind. But uh, at least it asks some questions of Colchester. And Lincoln, his best attacking threat has been that way. Erdley's gone down. Has he... Uh, Pull the muscle, or is it uh, a bit of cramp? He's uh, he seems a bit early no, for cramp, Tomo. Seems his instep to me. I mean, the, the thing what we've learned about early as well is that he, he, he doesn't go down, does he? He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a warrior as well as a, a technically very uh, gifted player, and he seemed to cross that ball and then and then just clutch his uh, his instep. Treatment uh, for Neil Erdley down by the edge of the penalty area. Danny uh, Cowley just occasionally just glancing down the line. That'll be the, the last thing he wants to lose such an experienced player. At the moment, it's a drinks break on the side of the pitch. And Neil Erdley seeing some treatment from Mike Hine. Just uh, in front of the small section of Colchester fans. Just a couple of hundred of them have made the trip up to Lincolnshire today. There's a lot of people in the ground clearly think uh, nothing's going to happen until the second half and are making for pints of beer and pasties players are still having a drinks break and like can't sometimes you're worried about drinks breaks but today Tom I don't think you can can you rehydration Mike. rehydration that's, that's, the, that's the the key word isn't it all them years ago when we were drinking cups of tea obviously not good for you did you genuinely have a cup of tea at half time everybody did <laughs> manager <laughs> That's very yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> along. Two sugars, Tomo. <laughs> no, no, it used to be cups of tea and. Did you have nice china or was it mugs? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we had mugs so that it, so if we lost, Colin could get a good leverage and throw them at you. Neil Ladley, please stay back on his feet. Don't seem to be in any uh, distress. And he'll be uh, coming back on. I didn't see from the fourth official how much stoppage time, uh, but we are into that stoppage time. And the game uh, back underway. Neil Lurdley back on the pitch. Let me see how much stoppage time I didn't, Tommy. No, I didn't. Two minutes, I think. 
he's just said to the uh, to Danny and Nicky, he held two fingers up. <laughs> it was one of the other. <laughs> well, that's your interpretation, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Half time in the game again, they wonder that we get to uh, mark in a bit. Uh, long ball forward, headed away by the uh, Codge to centre backs. Uh, they've more than dealt with that long ball forward from Lincoln. Needs to probably get out and isolate the, the full backs if they're going to play them. Uh, Wharton catches everyone out apart from Boswick and plays it to him. And Boswick now on the halfway line. We're going to drift a ball, a little pitching wedge into Matt Reed. Reed gets the first contact then shields the balls pushed over free kick the thing about Colchester is that they're quite happy I mean just having the one the front they're conceding the ball to to Boswick or uh, Wharton the centre backs Lincoln and they just retreat Colchester and just okay if you're going to hit the long diagonal we'll get uh, we'll get bodies and we'll compete for the first ball and uh, and the second well if you're going to get a goal it's not a bad time to get one final minute of the first half over it is Neil Erdley bright orange boots Stacey West end of the ground from the left and all of the Colchester players back bar one and uh, Erdley steps up drives in the ball pissed away breaks on the edge of the area Frecklington into the penalty area hasn't got an option gives it to Woodyard Woodyard looks to get it to Habergham it's a bit central for Habergham he drifts the ball out to uh, look for Reed's header. Reed heads it into Bostoku. Flicks it on. Green is there. There's a flag up for the assistant referee. And it's going to be a free kick. Yeah, uh, defended well, haven't they? I think Pross of the centre back, uh, Colchester, and the catch in the big number five is done exceptionally well. Really battled with Matt Reed. And uh, I think honours are even, but he's one of the important headers that he's had to win in his own 18 yard box, Prosser. Tell you, uh, Accrington 2-0 up now at Wickham. Fantastic season. Half-time whistle from the referee. It's been a reasonably nondescript sort of uh, half for uh, Lincoln City. Tomo, um, a half that never really got us going, did it? Jackson, Eastman, Prosser and Vincent Young the back four. And then, frankly, with the, uh, the way you're reading shirts, it's very hard to tell, but it's Murray Wright, uh, Stevenson, Rashad Poet and also Mandram. Uh, ahead of them uh, on the bench we'll spin you through that in a moment or two as we are uh, underway here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire in the second half and I know what I haven't done I don't think I don't remember doing is giving you the score lines that are other featured games let me just do those uh, when we get a brief break in play throw forward for Lincoln headed away uh, and then uh, Lincoln trying to win it back in midfield and they do with Palmer who, with um, Woodyard who smashes it downfield, goalkeeper comes to the edge of his area, collides with Matt Green and gets hold of the ball. So let's tell you that it's uh, uh, in Eva Sick League South Division, Lincoln United losing 1-0 at Basford, Spalding 1-1 against Leek, Romulus beating Stamford 2-0 in the UCL, Boston Town 2-0 down at Oadby, uh, Deeping losing 1-0 at Daventry, Holbeach 1-0 down against Ainsbury and Sleaford a 1-1 against Desborough Town. Steve Thompson alongside us. Oh, uh, well he's rolled the dice early yeah and you don't I can't, I can't remember a game where we've seen Palmer and Reed on the pitch at the same time Michael can one spring to mind with you I can't no nope. remember one no nope, I, I think it's it's it, I was about to say the logical change it's not the logical it's the the usual change isn't it it'd be fair to say a um, bit more beef maybe is that what he's looking for well I suppose the thing I mean I'm not quite sure because Pross is winning all the balls at the back and uh, I think the number of balls, diagonal balls at Lincoln have hit. Does he think that safety in numbers and we'll get Palmer and Reed up there and try and isolate one of the centre forwards with one of the lesser defenders? Thrown down the line, headed, uh, no, he was going to be headed away by Green, but cleared away and bounces up and it's on the halfway line with Green and out of play. And it's a throw for Lincoln City and uh, thrown forward, headed away by the defender, but Lincoln trying to get pace to their game. And they uh, win the ball back. It's a good play from Frecklington. He gets it to Green. And the ball bobbles up on Green. Does he win the corner? Yes, he does. Now, there's certainly a lot of height on the pitch from both teams now with Palmer coming on. And the temperature, if anything, has dropped a little. It's uh, a bit more overcast. Tomo was warning of thunderstorms at five. Not sure about that, Tomo. Well, it's gone darker. The blue clouds are disappearing. <laughs> blue clouds? Yeah. <laughs> Cumulonimbus. <laughs> Hubbingham corner into the uh, penalty area and it's headed 
off the back of a Lincoln player and behind for a goal kick. Certainly a task for the referee now with the set players, isn't it? To sort out lots of pushing and tall players, a lot of physicality. They can try to get the game hurrying along. To be fair to Colchester, they have not, they've been almost the carbon, kind of the carbon opposite, the complete opposite, haven't they, of, um, of Wickham. They've just wanted the game to, to really flow. They've, they've tried to play at a pace as well, which has, has helped. While it hasn't been a game of many chances. Frecklington competing in midfield, it's flicked on, Palmer chases after it, doesn't come to him, Frecklington clears downfield, oh. lead away by the defender, I think he mistimed that one, and it bounces up, and Woodyard tidily gets the ball out to Erdley on the halfway line, Erdley first time ball to Whitehouse, Whitehouse's touch just takes him a bit wide, he plays it back to Boswick, and Boswick is a, a ball forward to Reed, who I thought was offside, they don't think so, played into feet, Whitehouse, oh, and he falls over, referee not interested on the edge of the area Erdley and Green exchanging passes Erdley makes the run Erdley right footed ball into the penalty area headed away it's going to fall for Woodyard and he gets it to Habigan Lincoln showing a bit of endeavour here Habigan pushing forward not much doing for him he's looking for support and he's got that in Woodyard his captain the number 30 plays it all the way back to Wharton Water takes a touch, comes inside and spreads the ball to the right to Boswick. And Boswick looks up, plays it down the line, and it's put uh, rather nervously out of play by the Colchester player. Yeah, you would expect if Palmer's in, uh, certainly up there now we read that there's more aerial uh, challenges to come. Thirdly, looking for the uh, cross into the penalty, um, headed back, oh, it nearly found Whitehouse, who then commits the foul. A good, it was a really difficult header from Reed, but he did well to direct it back to Whitehouse, but it forced them away from goal. They lost possession. Yeah, it is. I think there's uh, more crosses gone in. It's opening four minutes of the second half than we probably saw in all the first half, and by that I mean crosses in deep positions. Well, changes very much that Palmer's on the left, Green is on the right, Whitehouse just behind Matt Reed. Or in, like if you look at the bench now, you've got a goalkeeper, two centre backs. Okay, that uh, Grantham were 1 0 down in their game. A win this afternoon would have guaranteed them a playoff place, whatever else happened. I think they're pretty much there anyway. And uh, also, you remember top of the table in that league. Boston United 2 0 up. Games for Trinity last we heard 1 0 up. We'll try and get to those games in a few minutes. As Lincoln City pressing the ball, Colchester with it on the halfway line, chipped out towards the right-hand side, and Jackson has it. And he looks to take on Palmer, gets the cross him, but it's headed away by Frecklington. Whitehouse goes up, comes back at Lincoln again, headed away by Wharton. Second header from Wharton, has gone back into Lincoln. Penzo Mandron tries to get squeeze it away, but Palmer does what I like as a striker to do. He gets back and defends it, Tomo, but he doesn't muck around he just kicks the ball away from goal risk and safety and he's not equipped really to deal with it back there and take people on is he you don't want him doing that I just wonder Michael Smodix for, for Colchester their star player, player. Well, I wonder yeah. why he's on the bench now along the is he injured or who knows but you, you touted around and through the season for 500,000 and was on fire at the start of the season scoring goals I wonder if he's going to get introduced into the uh, into the fray Flicked on from Colchester, cleared long into the Colchester half. And Reed is chasing after it. And Reed has done enough to put the centre half off, but the ball didn't break kindly for Lincoln. Colchester should bring it away. Lincoln pressing the space with Ollie Palmer. And the defender gets it away to the halfway line. Wharton pushing the Colchester player back. Wharton in with a challenge, and the Colchester player is in a sandwich of three red and white shirts. And it's going to be a free kick to Colchester. So let's get to Telford and to Mark. Yeah, games with Trinity still 1-0 up here, but, and they're defending really well in the second half so far. We're 10 minutes into it, it's still games with Trinity 1-0 up. Get to Salford now, and Dale. Boston United still leading by two goals to nil. Salford are having a go, a couple of efforts by Lewis Maynard. Why, George Willis, first minute of the second half, booked for time wasting. He's going to have to be careful in the Boston goal. Still Salford nil, Boston two. They can have a throw right in front of the Colchester dug out, Habigan will take it to Palmer who chests it down 
Not much doing for Ollie Palmer. Ball goes out. I thought of Palmer, but it's gone out for Colchester to play. Lincoln have the throw for Habergham. Matt Reid is offering. It's a long throw from Habergham. Green is onto the end of it inside the penalty area. Looks to give it to Palmer. Palmer squares it. Well, I don't think he intended to square it. And the penalty. Does he? He does give a penalty. Yeah, penalty. I assume for the foul on Palmer. I didn't really think it was. Neither did I. I don't think anyone on the ground thought it was. Dolce has to bench it, asking what's happened. And Danny and Danny are the coach to bench, having to a set to. Not, so we have a huge goal here, potentially, and then we will be heading to Telford. Can Lincoln City score? Whitehouse and Green and Palmer all fighting over the ball. Well, this is not good. Whitehouse says he's taking it. Well, I hope he scores it. Not oh, ideal. And Green didn't seem happy. Palmer. Palmer doesn't seem happy. Nobody's happy. Well, I hope for Whitehouse to well, save that he scores. Yes. We've had this a few times under Danny. It just seems to be one of the areas that doesn't specify too much. Anyway, Elliot Whitehouse, South Park end of the ground. Can he open the goal account? for this game today, nil-nil the scoreline, he's going to just readjust the ball, it just seems to move slightly, and then we'll be heading to Telford, Whitehouse is not rushing here, he's not even looking, Danny, look, well it's a huge moment in Lincoln City's season, and Elliot Whitehouse, the star from Wembley, going to score here! There's your answer, 1-0 Lincoln City, Whitehouse is the name! Actually, it was quite a cool, calm penalty at the end, wasn't it? But uh, at least Whitehouse had belief in himself, which is good. That's what you want, a penalty taker to believe that he can score. Right, thunderous noise around Central Bank. Let's head to Telford. Mark, please tell us it's a games for goal. It is, Michael. Unbelievable. It's 2-0 to games with Trinity. Fantastic play for Craig King, who's coming as a substitute for Alex Simmons. Great play in midfield. He released Nicky Walker down the left-hand side. He squares it, and there's Ashley Warsford yet again, running in, six yards out. He couldn't miss. Unbelievably, it's 2-0 games with Trinity here. Blimey. That's all I could say, Tom. Oh, blimey. We said, didn't we, a week ago, they need to have championship form. Well, they've won... We're in the, on the way to winning three games in a row. Yeah, you ask yourself, why has it not happened before now? Right, anyway, uh, back to the Lincoln penalty, very calmly taken as we're uh, getting a, a change of Colchester. It's an innocuous penalty, Michael. It doesn't seem to be. Well, I'd like to know what it was for. I mean, I assume it's the foul on Palmer. But as people have heard in my commentary, I continue. There's a pressure. Oh, the goalkeeper stumbles and clears. And it's back with Woodyard. Are Lincoln going to get a little burst of goals here? They're coming forward as a foul on Whitehouse. Free kick, Lincoln City, very central. Yeah, I mean, up to the penalty, it was a very disciplined, organised uh, performance from Colchester. And then even at just two minutes after the penalty, they've been all over the place. Well, Sid is, uh, if you know your Lincoln fans, he's, he's taking his top off, he's swinging it over his head. He's re revealing rather a lot on the opposite side of the ground. Uh, right, anyway, we've got a change coming up here. We've got the uh, number 20, Courtney Senior, coming on. I didn't catch the number of the player coming off, but Courtney Senior, uh, the one who is coming on, and he's replaced uh, Alamidi Shodpido, which I'm glad I didn't have to take too many, <laughs> stay too many times. Spoken like a heart. native. <laughs> it is a free kick for Lincoln City. It is central, halfway between the halfway line in the edge of the penalty area and it's early over it early chips it out to the left hand side and that is going to go straight behind it was a bit of a nothing one that one bit of a nothing burger 1-0 still Lincoln to be fair to Elliot Whitehouse I mean it, it's a big imposing goalkeeper that he was up against and he sort of very calm penalty I shoot green off and uh, anyone else who was interested and as I said I'm pleased for him that he scored it Danny weren't too happy about watching it well all's well that ends well and what a terrific scoreline for games with Trinity as there is a Lincoln player down with a holding his head and there's an off 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 shot now I, I think this is really interesting because the referee is very animated and I didn't think the challenge was as bad as all that I mean obviously the head injury is a concern 
Habigam has gone across to talk to the assistant referee and then have a, gla a drink of water. But I think the referee is having a very serious thing. Um, interestingly, the fourth official is doing nothing about the fact that Colchester coaching staff are talking to the assistant referee. And that's his job, that's what he's there for. Since that penalty, uh, mayhem's uh, broke out, hasn't it? Referee is uh, pulling Michael Mandrin to him. He's reaching into his top pocket. I don't know what he's storing there. If it's a, it looks like, I think it's a yellow, the amount of time he's talking. But Lincoln didn't like the challenge. And the club doctor's on, actually, Tomo. There as well. I mean, they're very concerned. There's a yellow card for Mandrin. Real. Let's get to the uh, games game, Mark. Another goal. Yeah, unfortunately, Telford are back in it. A corner from the left, in swing, and there's a skipper for Telford, Shane Sutton, just a side foot into the corner of the net. Game on here. Trinity still 2 1 up, though. Oh, you love football, Tom, don't you? Game on here. <laughs> Game on. <laughs> Van Gogh. Oh, you can't well, be, you can't be. one here. <laughs> that, there's an interesting thing. Shouldn't Wharton have gone off to come back on and he's been allowed to stay on? Should have gone off it. He's back up and he's all right. I mean, we've done about his broken skull and fractured head. And well, you don't know how bad it is, though, to be fair, Tom, when the player goes down. You have to take these things seriously. But Colchester, they seem to have just gone, don't they, at the moment? I oh, said so it was a very disciplined uh, performance in the first half. And with the penalty and everything that's un ensued since, it, it's, they've lost all the discipline. Mandron and Wharton having a chat. I wonder if that'll be one to watch. Headed on by Reed inside the area. And I think it was uh, Palmer who was thinking about the overhead. He's now chasing back, using all of his energy. And Mandron has uh, managed to get the ball forward. Boswick is the only centre-half back, and Boswick is enough. And Lincoln will clear with Woodyard, long downfield. And the game has got a little bit of needle, maybe, all of a sudden, as well as Matt Reed fights on the halfway line, turns his man, but then Colch to win the ball back. And they've got three against three at the moment, if they can work it. Boswick is taken out of the game. Ball is squared! 1-1 one, one. very well worked very well worked from Colchester 1-1 one, one the scoreline and I think it was Courtney Senior the substitute who scored it and um, it's all come Michael from Matt Reed's sloppy play he's lost it on the halfway line you know what the centre four is dropping deep and they drop into the own half and they start to the play and what he's done is he's gave a sloppy ball away and then uh, they've been counter-attack Colchester and they've had a 4v3 situation and they've worked the goal really well and I don't know if you noticed Michael but the animosity from uh, the two benches now the Colchester bench ran straight to Danny and Nicky and more or less said there you go, one all. Yeah, no love lost. Uh, right, let's give you some score lines in League 2 when we get a break in play. There's a long ball forward, is headed away by Colchester. Woodyard heads it back. Colchester working hard to get hold of it, and they do. Out on their right, the Lincoln City left. Ball into the Lincoln half. Wharton heads it out of play for a throw. Barnet 1, Newport 0. Cambridge 3, Cheltenham 2. Carlisle 1, Luton 0. Crew 0 0 against Morecambe as there's a foul by Frecklington. That's going to be a free kick to Colchester on the edge of the Lincoln City penalty on the right. Uh, Exeter 2, Crawley 1. Forestry 1, Chesterfield 1. Lincoln 1 0 against Colchester, one all against Colchester. Mansfield 0 0 against Port Vale. Notts County 2 0 against Yeovil. Swindon losing at home to Grimsby by a goal to 0 and Stanley 2 0 up at Wickham. Co uh, free kick stays the west end of the ground. Ball into the Imps penalty area oh. and it goes right across the area and it should be cleared away and it will rather gratefully be smashed away by Matt Reed. Green chasing after it, trying to turn it into a pass. Colchester clear into the Lincoln half. And uh, Colchester once again get possession, force all the way back into their own half, all the way back to their goalkeeper. Oh. Palmer, a willing oh. runner, and that goalkeeper does not convince me with his clearances. Frecklington stops the ball going downfield, but only at the cost of a throw. And the thing about Colchester, Michael, is they, they can play with sort of like a gabandment, can't they? You know, there's, there's nothing at stake for them, they can just keep going forward. If, if there was something at stake, you might think, oh, they'd be happy with a point. But no, let's just keep going and try and win it. Wharton heads it away, and then Woodyard further away. Whitehouse, the goal scorer for Lincoln, when it was 1-0, uh, it's now 1-1. Chasing after the ball, Colchester coming forward, Lincoln win it back in midfield. 
and it's Wharton out towards Green. Green tries to take the ball away from his man, keeps it in play, out on the left-hand side, cuts inside, Green, bit of room to run into, tries to play it for the run of Habigam, and unfortunately the run of Habigam was tracked by Colchester, otherwise he had a chance for the cross. City pressing the ball, Wharton heads it away, Whitehouse shields it, but the ball is cleared away into the Lincoln half, and Boston will have to play it all the way back to his goalkeeper, who will look to clear long from the Stacey West end of the ground with his second touch. Woodyard can't flick it on, it comes to Whitehouse, Woodyard, Frecklington back to Whitehouse, Whitehouse flicks the ball on, Green chases after it but it's cleared into the Lincoln half and that should be all the way through to the goalkeeper. So to remind you, Lincoln City 1-1 in this game, Gainsborough Trinity 2-1 up in an almost must-win game for them at Telford and Boston United, a fantastic scoreline for them, 2-0 away at Salford as Lincoln nearly break through there but it was just about dealt with by Prosser, the um, Colchester centre-half. And the game uh, always needs a settler for two minutes, Tomo. Well, you'd have thought the team that got the first goal would go on and win it, but, I mean, Colchester have scored so early after, after conceding that now it, it, it's become a, a game that's hard to predict at the moment, isn't it? Headed away by Bossick. He's going to go out of play. Let's get to Telford. There's been another goal, Mark. Oh, Michael, this doesn't get any e easier. It's an equaliser for Telford. Great play from Ryan. Miles down the left-hand side. He crossed it in. Trinity stood still. And there's their leading goalkeeper. Leading goal scorer, sorry. Marcus Denanga, who heads it into the net. It's one, it's two each now. Uh, it's a corner for Lincoln City. No, it's never over till it's over, is it? Long way to go in that game. Long way to go in this game. 25 and a half minutes. It's going to be a corner. South Park end of the ground. Habergum is going to be over it. He can deliver a good corner. And it's led to quite a few goals for Lincoln City. Are we going to get another here? Big moment in Lincoln City's sea. The air raid siren comes into life. Ball is into the penalty area. It's got too much on it. And it's all the way over. Colchester should clear. Back towards the halfway line where Neil Erdley is waiting for it. Inside the centre circle now. And he drifts it out towards the left-hand side, looking for Reed, cleared away by Colchester, bounces up, and Colchester look to bring it away, they play it to the right, and that ball is going to go out of play, but only thanks to Woodyard, and it'll be a throw for the line green of Colchester. Yeah, it's the look to Lincoln's bench, Michael, don't you? There's two centre-backs and a keeper, Palmer's on it. With Jordan Williams, isn't there? Jordan Williams, and we've not seen a lot of pets since he's joined the club, have we? Foul on Wharton, free kick for Lincoln City. So to remind you, Lincoln 1-1, Gainsborough 2-2, Boston United 2-0 up. And last we heard, Grantham Town 1-0 down. It's BBC Radio Lincolnshire, hope and glory. All sort of clears for the Imps into the South Park half. Reed goes up, doesn't win, it comes back for Fracklington. Fracklington gets it back to Boswick on the halfway line. He looks up and he'll hit it right to left to the edge of the penalty area. Reed goes up, flicks it on, Green gets onto it inside the penalty area. Is being forced away from goal, just that side of the area, pulls it back, can't find Woodyard, and it should be cleared by Colchester. They dealt well with the threat of Green, and it's all the way back to Ryan Allsop, will quickly bowl the ball out to Boswick, and you know what's going to happen, Boswick will get to the halfway line, and it'll hit it right to left. Lincoln competing for it as Reed comes up into the area, burst, Frecklington, can't quite control it, goes wide, goal kick. As you rightly like call, Michael, you know what's going to happen. It's going to just be up there for Palmer and Reid. Deal with that. Look for the knockdowns, which uh, Lee Frecklinson got on the end of, but just couldn't quite get his finish right. Steve Thompson, myself, Michael Horton, your commentary team. Dale with Boston leading 2 0. And uh, also Mark with Gainsborough Trinity and Graham Cowell with Grantham Town. That's your team here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. So it's going to be the uh, keeper, Walker, for Colchester, who clears to the South Park end of the ground, into the city half. Wharton heads it back. Palmer, who hasn't had too big an effect on this game, charges after it goes out of play. We've got a change coming up for Lincoln City. Is that, is that Pep, Michael? I don't think it's the hair. The hair comes, yeah, I think it is Pep, you're right. Well... He hasn't really announced himself to Lincoln City fans. It wouldn't be a bad day to do it. Forward come Colchester, driving into the Lincoln City half. Pushed away by Allsop near post corner. 
looking threatening again now obviously the, the goal is Boyd Colchester the equalizer that they got so corner for a lime green of Colchester only Matt Green not involved in this defensively for Lincoln City and uh, here it comes into the penalty area cleared away eventually by Erdley Green looking to flick it on and Woodyard looks up and Woodyard turns hasn't got much support gives it to Habigan and Habigan puts his foot through the ball cleared long comes back in midfield to Fracklington and Fracklington does well gets it out towards Erdley the right back plays it down the channel looking for Green to be a willing runner and Green is in behind looked to have been slightly caught to me the referee and his assistant didn't think so I thought he was clipped from behind by the uh, defender but Lincoln have won it back on the halfway line and it's Wharton, lovely ball forward to Frecklington. Frecklington into the feet of Palmer. Palmer puts a bit too much on it. Whitehouse is making the run and it's gone through and it's the goalkeeper, still 1-1. Well, what was good there is that Lincoln, it looked more uh, sort of constructive, didn't they, trying to play through the midfield. Frex is coming more into the game and looking to try and uh, get little gives and goes. Bit of goal in the Boston game, Dale. Salford have pulled one back. It was very similar to the goal games were conceded here. Corner played in, one centre half heads it across, and there was the giant Lewis Maynard to head in. Boston now leading by two goals to one. Not enough goals in this programme, is there? <laughs> Long clearance downfield. Reed. Reed's got a bit of time here. Plays it for the run of Erdley. Erdley right footed drifted ball in. Palmer is after it. Ball's just got a bit too much on it for Palmer. Habigam's chasing back on the halfway line. Ball is out of play for a throw. We're going to get Smodix. We certainly are. Coming on and replacing Sean Murray. So you'd think, well, Smodix is a very difficult player for Lincoln to deal with. And I think Pet is not too far away either. He's the talisman for them as well, isn't he? He's, this, you know, he's the one who seems to get a goal when you least expect it. Let's hope it's not today. <laughs> Everyone's refereeing the game at the moment. Well, <laughs> the tenor went through the throw and he still goes about 10 metres further forward. Right, Boswick has it for Lincoln, plays the ball out towards the left-hand side. Palmer chasing after it, pressurising the defender, forcing the defender back. The defender hooks it blind over his head. He gets lucky, although Habigam heads back goalwards. Whitehouse tries to flick it back towards Palmer. Palmer pressurising another Colchester defender. They're forced back but they managed to get it to the halfway line, although it's just intercepted by Woodyard. Woodyard, good challenge from him, ball goes out for a throw. Excellent from Woodyard, wasn't it? Didn't give it up. Looks like the substitution's imminent for, for Lincoln, Michael. Jimmy Walker's... Do you think Matt Reed change of, change of formation, or...? <laughs> I, think, I think, if anything, it'd be wide out. So I, I mean, the way the ball's going forward, you just think Reed's going to stand with Palmer. Hold your, hold your breath, Trinity fans. Let's get to Mark. Oh, Michael, it's gone against them. A cruel deflection of Michael Jacklin, looped over Henrik Ravas. And then the goal mouth scramble, I think it was Marcus Denanga again. The leading goal scorer for Telford has put them 3 2 up. And with current results going against Trinity, that, this result could relegate them. Oh, dear. That's not good. It's, uh, it's incredible how football could turn around. White House is off. And uh, he's been replaced by Tom Pep. But, well. What a moment for Trinity to be 2-0 up and it's a cruel game. Thrown down the line, flicked on by Reed. Palmer chases after it. Lincoln trying to win it back, but Colchester to have it. And uh, still nil-nil in the Mansfield game, just having a little check of that. As Colchester looking to push forward, forced back to the halfway line, a little stab of the ball forward. Lincoln closing down the space. Colch to have it again, pushing forward. Lincoln trying to close off the forward momentum. Colch straight towards the left-hand side. Lincoln after it again. The lime green of Colchester in possession. Just uh, playing in front of Lincoln at the moment. The Imps win the ball back briefly. Boswick misses his challenge. Four, five Colchester players are in. And it's pushed away. Oh. And somehow they put it over the top. Colchester should be ahead. 
We saw Lincoln's doing as well, isn't it? I think it was uh, Luke Woodyard. Luke Woodyard, yeah. He uh, gave it away. Alex Woodyard gave it away, didn't he? And, and Boswick dived in, and he was he was nearly similar to the nearly similar to the goal that they conceded. Well, uh, Waterfall for Boswick. Boswick into midfield and Frecklington probably. It seems a good shout, Michael. Yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, I would, you would never want to change your back four, but it's that thing of getting Boswick further forward. Reed's pushed over that time. That was an easy incision for the referee. Reed just needs to. You want to get Waterfall it. on for the set play, Lincoln. Change. If that's Wharton, maybe he's got a knock, Tomo. He's coming off. You wouldn't yeah. expect they'd want to take him off, would you? Unless he's struggling from the, uh, from the, from the knock, knock on the head. Be interesting whether Doctor sort of gets hold of him now and has a look at him. But he's well, played well. Jimmy Walker can uh, played well the lad, hasn't yeah, yeah. he? Again, maybe Jimmy Walker's doing the doctor's duties today. I saw he had a look. <laughs> All right, it's a free kick for Lincoln City. Driven into the penalty, cleared away by Colchester. Not the best of deliveries from Erdley. Although it looks like that was what was intended. I, can't, I couldn't see the plan myself. Could no. You? I it was, was, maybe it, was it a Baldrick plan? Was it a cunning yes. plan? It is uh, still nil-nil in the Mansfield game. Stanley are now three-nil up at Wickham. Don't care whether they're on the beach or not. It will no. not be an easy game next week. No, John Coleman has done a fantastic job there. That looked like a handball from Green. Referee didn't see it. Habergum loops the ball out of play. One-one here. Remind you, games with Trinity from being two-nil up, a three-two down. Staring relegation in the face. And uh, Boston United 2-1 up in their game as well. Oh. Thrown down the line. Lincoln have managed to get it to the halfway line. And it's uh, Palmer who uh, is pressing the defence and wins the ball back. Well done to Oli Palmer. Now he needs to look around for support, and he tries to get out to Green on the right-hand side. Green up against the defender, inside Green, and it's going to break for the edge of the area where the shot is over the top from Pep. Oh, excellent work by Palmer. Terrific work from Ollie Palmer there. Didn't give a free kick away, really put the defender under pressure, nicked the ball off him. Very well, very well done. Well, it's been a hot day at times, so if his fitness is a... A question for either team, you'd, you'd expect a few problems in the last 10-15 minutes, wouldn't you? This is where one of us says, Michael, that we can feel a goal coming, or the, another goal in it, and I think there is another goal in it. I don't know what your feelings are, I just don't think it'll finish 1-1. I just don't think either create many chances, though, Tommy. Yeah, just think, I mean, the penalty came out of nowhere, and Colchester's keeper was an unforced yep. error as well. Long ball downfield, Reed looking for it, Reed heads it on, Green chases after it into the area but he's not going to get near, it should be cleared and it'll be picked up by Erdley just inside his own half and he stabs it to Waterfall and the club captain plays it all the way back to Allsop. Waterfall looks to drive the ball from the right to the left, Long looking for Reed to flick it on, Reed has, Pet is charging in behind trying to turn it to a pass and he's pushed unceremoniously away and that's a goal kick, but at least he pushed forward. Just getting bashed from back to front yeah, at the I moment, know, yeah. isn't it? And it, it's all about. I know you win at all costs. I, I keep repeating it. It's not about how you play this end uh, of the season. It's just about how you win, and winning's everything. Long ball into the Lincoln half, headed away by Boswick at the cost of a throw. And then it's ticking away. Frustration for Lincoln City. We uh, matched. In many a ground around the country. Lots County 3 0 up. Big score like Mansfield leading by a goal to nil, Tomo. That's very important. Just scored in the last few minutes. And whilst it's always in Lincoln's hands, Mansfield oh. will be uh, encouraged. And it's uh, Lincoln now under a real pressure. Just overplaying a little bit. And then. Uh, Allsop comes into his penalty here and pushes the ball forward to Erdley and Erdley drives it into a Colchester player and out for a throw. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I mean, the noise is, I think the news has got around the ground maybe about Mansfield. Long ball forward. City trying to play it over the top for Green to chase in behind. Green to the edge of the penalty area, looking to drag the ball forward. Green tries to get the cross in, and it's a throw for City. Twelve and a half minutes to go. Well, what's what's happened? I think he's done his forelock. He's injured. I think he's done his forelock, hasn't he? <laughs> Assistant referee is injured. <laughs> Is he all right? Oh, the official, come on, get involved. Your colleague Sue's going to have to tell me because I can't see for the pillar. Well, he's moving again. It's going to be a long throw for Lincoln into the penalty. 1 1 the scoreline here on BBC Radio Lincoln with Colchester. Thrown into the area. Reed goes up. It's cleared away by the line green shirts of Colchester. Back towards Erdley. Erdley to the byline. Looks to get the cross into the penalty area, headed over. Oh, dear me. Luke Wardfall had a magnificent chance there. The keeper was inside his own goal. Unfortunately, headed over. Well, I think he was uh, I think he was forced out of it. It was two or three uh, Colchester defenders rounding for Luke Wardfall. I think he might have just got a fraction early, just couldn't get uh, any purchase on the ball to head it down. 11 minutes to go. Remind you, Lincoln City 1 1, Boston United 2 1 up. Gains for Trinity 3 2 down and staring relegation for the first time in the face in 125 years as a football club. Reed flicks it on, headed away. Frecklington heads it on. Power go, go, Palmer goes up and it comes back and Boswick competes for it. And then uh, good play from the captain, Waterfall, heads it back to his goalkeeper. Ten minutes plus stoppage time to go. So about 13 minutes to find a goal for Lincoln City. As Allsop clears long, Reed looks to flick it on, can't do so. Lincoln pressing in midfield. Colchester don't come up with it, comes to Erdley. Colchester trying to bring the ball away, Mandron very deep. Turns and stabs the ball forward. And that's a poor challenge from Waterfall and a free kick to Colchester. I think the Colchester changes, Michael, have been good for them. They've, they've actually put players on who are nimble on the feet and, and trying to make things happen. Uh, they've, they've kept the big man up the front, the big six foot four man, but really they've, they've tried to play through the midfield whenever they can. So it's a free kick for Colchester, high into the penalty area, and it's headed away by Boswick. Colchester chase after it, Lincoln trying to win the ball back, Pep can't stop it coming in but it only hits Habergham and Habergham clears long downfield, Palmer is under it, trying to control it, heads it once, heads it twice, trying to get away from the defender, has got away from the defender, Palmer squares it to Green, Green onto his left, shoots, covered in by the goalkeeper, Palmer didn't chase it in, pushed away from the keeper, Palmer, you've got to think, should have anticipated there but he didn't, and it's cleared and it's a throw on the halfway line for Lincoln. Uh, well done again, Oli Palmer. Actually, he's doing well as he pressurising defenders. And if anything, as you said, Michael, didn't follow the shot in, did he? Would no. have been the tap in. Lincoln have it with Habigam. Nine minutes to go. Nine nervous minutes for Lincoln City. Wardful on the halfway line. Right to left ball into the penalty, edge of the penalty. Area. Palmer with time controls it. And he suddenly gets a bit of space. Palmer shoots! Hits the crossbar! Fantastic effort from Palmer! Breaks for Green inside the area. Green to Frecklington. Frecklington back into Waterfall. Waterfall chips it forward. Palmer is there, heads it on. Headed away by a defender. Up goes Reed, heads it on. Goalkeeper gathers it in. Still 1 1. What a fantastic. Uh shot from Palmer, I was right behind it as you were and it looked like for all the world it was going to nestle in the top left hand corner but fortunately for Colchester, unlucky for Lincoln, it hit the crossbar and bounced down but Palmer's certainly having an impact at the moment Clearance from the keeper Long downfield Boswick heads it away Pat further back towards the halfway line, the lime green shirts have 
Colchester to have it. 1-1 the scoreline. Remind you, games were 3-2 down. Boston United 2-1 up here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Colchester being forced back, but then they play it long into the Lincoln half. And that should be Ryan Olsops. It's going to be a change coming up for the Vistas uh, uh, in a minute. Long downfield. Reid looks to flick it on. Palmer was behind him. Reid goes over. Referee is not interested. Long into the Lincoln half. Two Colchester players against Boswick. Mandrin is there. The referee is going to give a free kick now. It could be a red card against Boswick, could it? For pulling back. The referee is going across to talk to his assistant. And I think Boswick might be on a red here, Tomo. Well, he certainly flagged for a Colchester free kick. And if that's so, Boswick was the last man. Referee and assistant having a word. I think Pat is trying to make the case that he was there as well. It's a long conversation. Very long conversation. And they're still talking, it's red card. Huge moment in the game. Huge moment in Lincoln's season, Tom Oak, because Michael Boswick will not be available for the next three games. It's like a double whammy, isn't it? It's one, it's, and it's just a long ball that's played down the middle, it's 1v1. Boswick just got caught out for pace and it's a red card unfortunately a very very influential player for Lincoln that we're missing as you said for three games well if we see Michael Boswick in a red and white shirt in the next month it'll be in the playoffs and Danny Cowley's squad is all of a sudden going to be stretched and all of a sudden with ten men a point suddenly doesn't look too bad if they can hold on to it but results going their way, not going their way elsewhere. And the uh, race for those playoff places just looking a little steeper without arguably one of their most influential players. So 1-1, one, one, free kick. I think it's the right decision, by the way. I don't think the uh, referee had a choice. Free kick is well over the top. I don't think yeah. it's a choice, I don't think well, it's the linesman, he flagged straight away, didn't he? And he flagged for a Colchester free kick. And as you said, once that was awarded, there was only one decision. 9,211 here today. It's all a great attendance again. Just looking what they're going to do to reorganise uh, Lincoln. What she decided to do. Well, if Wharton's injured as well. Well, he will still come in. Yeah, absolutely. Last time, we come, last time he kicked the ball in anger been a while long ball downfield half cleared away coach to bring the ball away referee is playing the was he no he's not but he's playing the advantage but they've taken the free kick quickly Colchester Matt Reed's gone down Matt Reed's back up as Colchester in lime green come forward ball out to the right hand side we're going to take on his man Ball chipped into the penalty, headed away by Waterfall, further away by Green. Palmer trying to hold on to it. Palmer smuggles the ball to Green. Green has got some room to run into. Green is offside, but Green holds on to it. Green is working terrifically hard and gets a free kick, and he deserves a lot of credit there for me. I'm just, it looks like uh, Abigail's just gone alongside Waterfall. I think Danny's decided just to go three at the back and just said, look, you know. We'll play 3v1. Well, is it a red card in Boston game, down? Yes, Michael. Salford down to 10 men. Just Masuta sent off. Second yellow card for a foul on Reese Thompson. Boston are just about hanging on. Still Salford 1, Boston 2. Reed is lying on the uh, floor. The referee didn't think it was a penalty. It's forward again. Wardfall heads it back across the penalty area. Green can't get hold of it. Frecklington chases after it. Back into... Woodyard, the referee's now going back because a because uh, a Colchester player is down. I thought Reed was pulled over that time, Tom. I'm no, normally not one to say no, that, but I thought it's pulled Reed over. Reed fouled him first. Reed fouled the I watched it. Reed fouled the Colchester player first, and, and then went down, trying to buy a penalty. Well, I disagree. Anyway, well, I'm going to have to pull rank. What age? <laughs> no appearances, I think. No, I watched Reed. I watched him deliberately, and he, he pushed him. And, and when they went down afterwards, I tell you, the, the path to the playoffs now looks quite steep, doesn't it? 
still in the I've, not, I've not looked at the table. I've just been. Uh, well, when, in the you, game. when you when you look, they need nine, they need another eight points in the last three games, so they need three wins, as things stand, and they don't have Michael Boswick. Well, Tomo thinks we'll leave him for about five minutes and come back to him. Well, they've got a game in hand, haven't they? I know, but they've got the game in hand, and if they if they win the game in hand, then they, they get the same amount of points as Mansfield with the same games played, and then it becomes anybody's game. But it is steeper. I think I'm right in that. Anyway, uh, Gainsborough have five minutes left in the National League North. Five minutes from their first ever relegation. Only thing I'd say, I'd, I'd rather be in Mansfield's shoes than Lincoln's. That's what I would say at the moment. Which I think has changed. You know? It has changed with that yeah. uh, with the victory. If, if that's what it finishes, it's yeah. not over yet. Hopefully. Deep breaths. Colchester are about to make a change. Reed goes up, flicks it on Palmer on the edge of the area. Palmer trying to get the shot away, it's blocked. Frecklington chases back after it, gets it back to Woodyard, who's deep. Woodyard chips it forward into the penalty. Reed goes up, referee's not interested, gives a free kick for the handball. See, I think I think Matt Reed Michael, makes it worse for himself. You know, he's trying to get penalties. I'm not saying some of them aren't fouls against him, but he just makes it. He's got up there with his hands in. in in, in, the air, in, the, in the air and, and, and really unballed it before it's even got to be a free kick and he's got a yellow card for his trouble as well one minute the stoppage time got Brandon Cobley coming off and being replaced by Junior Agadi Uzadiki <laughs> I'm just going to call him Junior it's a real test of this Colston yes, team isn't it it's, um, yeah it's, a, it's a great game Mike it's all about opinions isn't it and, and we have loads of them Travelling down. Well, it's just going to be can Lincoln just get one more chance and head it away. Palmer controls it, forced back at the Lincoln penalty area. Woodyard goes up. That's a free kick. And uh, cleared long downfield. Green chasing after it down the right channel. Green showed terrific pace. He forces the defender away from him. Out on the right side. Green is fouled. Free kick. Lincoln City. Stupid uh, challenge from the fullback. You know that one chance you were beckoning. Get the artillery up there, good delivery from Habergan. Attack the ball, waterfall, come on. I was captain. about to say waterfall. Captain, well. fantastic, yeah. Well, you called it with Raggett a couple of, yeah. a year ago, was it, or whatever? Well, whatever the lucky thing in your house is, grab hold of it. They can badly need a goal in this chase for the playoffs. 1 1 the scoreline, results going against them elsewhere. What sort of delivery can Sam Habigan supply into the South Park penalty area? It's hell! It's over the head of everyone behind. Well, that was a good delivery as well, wasn't it? A waterfall was there, waiting for it. Yeah. Just a bit too much. Yeah, just. It's what you want to do—the fast delivery as opposed to the one with plenty of Have air. Have you seen how much stoppage time? No, he's not put the ball up, Michael. As far as I'm aware. Well, that's not. That's good of him not to show us because we're into stoppage time, so I'm going to guess at three to four minutes. Headed away, long ball downfield, cleared away, and then further towards Reed. Reed controls it, tries to get into Palmer, comes back into midfield, and Pett can't find Reed. It breaks down for Lincoln City, and Colchester pushing forward. Pett is chasing back, trying to close off the forward momentum. Wins it and clears it. Palmer turns it into a pass. He's been really hard working since coming on at half time Palmer drives it forward Reed can't control it pushed over referee allows play to continue and we're inside the inside stoppage time here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire I can tell you a very big scoreline in the Mansfield game Port Vale have equalised Tommy go on then what's the, what's the position now <laughs> Port Vale have equalised in the 89th minute Tom Pope scoring the goal and which, which, which means, means if that stay, I want to say if that stays the same Lincoln needs six six points five oh, I'll do it in a minute <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can't do I have no chance well Colchester driving forward it's a shot which is deflected up Colchester inside there they're offside offside doesn't oh. matter Colchester was celebrating, it was offside. We're going to try and do the league tables here. Okay. 
Is this up to date? Yes, it is. So the best Mansfield can get is 74. So Lincoln need five points. Two, but six will be enough. It's no longer nine points, which I think is what it was. Long ball forward. Palmer controls it. Green inside the area. Shoots, takes a deflection corner. This is it, Tomo. Waterfall. I'm telling you. <laughs> I hope you're right. He's had a word with Habergham, Luke Waterfall. I think he said, put it up there and I'll do the rest. Danny Cowley's uh, Lincoln's promotion push last season was full of late goals, of late drama. Danny Cowley can hardly bear to look. Habergham, one of the stalwarts of those, uh, prom the promotion year last year is there, as is Waterfall and Woodyard and Reed. Sort can they out. magic something up at I've the South Park end of the ground? I think I'm going to sort that out, Mike. Look, it's... You've got four or five over six foot two or three there. Good luck, referee. Two and a half minutes of stoppage time. Air raid siren goes. Everyone holds their breath. Ball is into the penalty area. Fisted away by the goalkeeper. Woodyard retrieves it. Gets it back to Erdley on the halfway line. Erdley out towards Woodyard. He's got a bit of an angle, but Woodyard plays it inside. So Lincoln bringing the ball forward very well. Woodyard to Green. Green on the edge of the area, forced away. Now he charges and back heels it to Woodyard. Drives it into the area. Palmer controls it. Palmer inside the area. Trying to get the cross into the area. Cleared away by a culture player. Woodyard stabs it high. It's heading. Go! It's Lincoln! It's gone! And it's Waterfall! Waterfall has done it! He's got a magic hat and he headed it in! Luke Waterfall, you hero! Never doubt the captain. Oh, dear me. Unbelievable, Tomo. Who writes Danny and Nicky's scripts? Who writes them? I don't know, but uh, I said never bet against Waterfall. Is a captain fantastic? Is this it's a talisman, the man, isn't he? Ten men have done it. It's euphoric here. I can't think of a bigger contrast to Mark at Telford. Yes, Michael, it's finished. Telford 3, Gainsborough Trinity 2. I'm just looking at the standings. I think that literally has relegated Gainsborough Trinity for the first time in their 125-year history. Sad scenes here, I'm afraid, at Telford, Michael. They've conceded three goals in a really bad 20-minute spell, sorry, in the second half, where they lost all their shape, all their composure. I could run through the, the goals, but... I will do so shortly, but I'm just a bit gutted for games with Trinity at the minute. They have been relegated and the players have just realised, I think, what's going on as they go to their supporters. Yeah, he's finished here. Tell for three. defending here. Green clears it away. That's it. Downfield. That's the whistle! What drama! What euphoria here at Sensal Bank! Luke Waterfall's headed home! And it's all changed again, so unbelievable. Unbelievable. I think that's the table there, Michael. If you well, I'll try and do the maths as you try and well, while well, seeing Luke Waterfall's praises, you said to me about his character. He doesn't get selected today, but he steps up when he's needed. The thing was, one of the first corners they got, uh, Waterfall went to Habergham, and I'm sure he just said, "Look, put it in there, and I'll do the rest." And uh, I've got lots and lots of time for Luke Waterfall, both as a player and a person. I mean, he gets left out of the team, and he's. As I said, it must be a joy for Danny because he comes on and he uh, he was only one winner of that ball and he just he just went through and it was a perfect header, wasn't it? Uh, four points to be certain of the playoffs. Three and then uh, it's about goal difference between them and Mansfield. But huge, huge result.